What up, folks? It's Alex here. I made a thing. It's called Magic Subtitles for DaVinci Resolve Studio 20. Now, there's a bunch of key information you absolutely must know before you do anything. But before we get into that, let me give you a demonstration in real time. So here we are. Let's open up this project. And this is about a 1 minute 20-ish timeline. So it's a short little video. And we want some subtitles. So we're going to open up the effects library, come down to Titles, Magic Toolkit, Magic Subtitles. There's about 30 different templates. Let's grab this cartoon one, put it anywhere on our timeline where we want to create our subtitles. Give it a click, open up the inspector, choose the track you want to use as the basis for your subtitles, and then choose whether you want to create a compound clip. I'm going to do loads of these, so I'm going to go Compound, Full Track. Then we're gonna hit transcribe. Now I'll make sure there's no cuts here whatsoever. This is all real time. It's made a backup of my timeline. It's turned that whole track into a compound clip and then it's transcribed that compound clip. So now we've got word for word animated subtitles directly on the timeline. Grab push, bring it onto your PNG and it will simply push in from the left. Eh? Eh? Yeah! <laughs> Now, if we delete this one, let's just go back to the effects library and grab something else. Because we turned that track into a compound clip, I can grab any of them that I like, hit transcribe. It won't need to do the transcription right again. Transition, come down to create. And there you go. You want another one? Cool. Grab it, click it, transcribe. Right. Done. Eh? Yeah? Yeah, it's pretty neat. I'm pretty pleased with this. Now, that key information I mentioned at the beginning. Let's whip through this really quick. First up, yes, it's all available right now. There are links down in the description below. Number two, you absolutely must be on DaVinci Resolve Studio to use this. It does not work on the free version of DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve Studio only. That's because we're using the inbuilt transcription engine, which only exists within the studio version. The benefits though, it's already there. You don't need to do anything extra and it works even if you're offline because the transcription engine is built in. Nice. You also need to make sure you're on DaVinci Resolve Studio 20 at the very least. I have tested it on 20.1 and it's all good. Now this was not designed for really long timelines. It's designed for shorter timelines. It's designed for punchy videos, little YouTube videos, shorts, TikToks, or whatever. It will work on longer timelines. You just need to make sure you cut it up into smaller sections. But if you've got one 20 minute magic sub on your timeline, it's gonna have a bit of a hard time doing anything pretty much. Now I built and tested this in English because that's the language I speak, but a few people started testing it and confirmed that it does work with pretty much any language that's available within the transcription engine within DaVinci Resolve, with the exception of Arabic and Hebrew because that reads right to left when everything else reads left to right. It will work, it's just the animations won't work. I will flip the logic and I will release an Arabic and Hebrew specific version in the future. Now, because this works in a slightly unusual way, and because I wanted to make sure you could test to make sure it works in your own language, there's a free version. Yeah, I mean, there's a free version of the thing. You still need to be on Studio, but you can download the free version of Magic. There's a Magic Subtitles free, but you still need Studio. Let me show you what that does. So you can get started and you can have a play. Once downloaded, just double click on the Magic Subtitle.drfx DaVinci Resolve will open. It'll ask if you want to install. I'm overwriting, but same thing. And then once that's done, in the effects library, titles, magic toolkit, you'll see just one singular magic subtitle. Put it on your timeline, give it a click, and it works in pretty much the exact same way. We've got track, we've got compound. I'm gonna go with section only, just to do this small section. Transcribe that. It's gonna do that in a jiffy. We've got this fix and mistakes box, so if you wanna change any spellings, we can do, just type it in there and hit apply. You can jump through these really quickly, nice and easy. We've got all caps, we've got remove punctuation. You've got all the offset timing, the whole time, the words per sub, it's all text plus. So you can come in and customize all of these sorts of things. Go through, do the shading, do the transforms and whatever else you want. And you can use that as much as you like because it's free forever. Neat, right. Let's jump into some more exciting things and I'm just gonna show you how to install the studio version because that's actually really interesting because it does some clever stuff in the background. Most of you won't care and it'll be obvious, but meh. And we also include some additional stuff within the installer. So let's go. So once downloaded, you'll end up with this magic subtitle dot zip. Unzip that and you'll end up with these folders. There's a handy little readme which tells you what I've been updating 
and there's this font style guide. Give it a click and it will show you all of the fonts that I've included because there's no point in me making a nice little subtitle preset if you don't have access to the fonts. So they're all there. You can install all of these and then you can continue using them forever. There's a folder with the licenses if you want to have a look. And if you open up the fonts folder, here's all the fonts. If you're on Windows, all you do, highlight them all, right click, there's an option to install. That will install all of the fonts. If you're on Mac, similar thing, I think you'll highlight them all and then drag them into your font book. Then you'll see this magic subtitle.drfx. Double click that, DaVinci Resolve once again will open. It'll ask you to install or overwrite if you had the previous free version installed or whatever. Then open up the effects library and we've got all of the nice tasty subtitles there ready to go. But can you customize them? Yeah, of course you can. So you want a write on effect? Tick that. If you don't want it, untick it. Let's just change the font to something a little bit smaller, like this one. You want all caps? Tick all caps. Job done. You want to get rid of all of the punctuation? Remove punctuation. You can even customize exactly what punctuation is being removed. If we jump over to our style tab, we can change all of the key animations, the timing. We can set some custom stuff. So now this is going to fade in as well. And we can change the color of the spoken word. Let's go with a nice blue for these ones. And we can even change the color of the background text like so. Come in, customize these, even give them all a little bit of a camera shake, a bit of a general wobble as you like. There's even a highlight. So you can just write the words you want to be highlighted in a different color, hit enable, choose the color and apply. And now create is going to be red while everything else is going to remain blue. Nice. Magic subtitles. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm, I'm pleased with this. <laughs> I think it's pretty neat. Yeah. But what about fixing spelling? Or even if you don't like the words per sub and you want to customize the line breaks? Mm. Well, for spelling fixes, there's two different ways. We created a compound clip. So what we can do is find that compound clip, come to AI tools, audio transcriptions, and transcribe. And then we can fix any spellings or incorrect words within here. This is useful because if you change a word and then retranscribe once again, it's always going to pull through correctly because we've changed it in the transcription. But sometimes you just want to do a super quick fix and you don't want to have to dig around the transcriptions. So instead, there's this fix spellings box. So let's say effects, we actually want it to be potato. We change that to potato and then click apply. And now it shows as potato. But what about if you want to do loads at once? Well, if you click on this open editor, you will see all of the subtitles within this box and we can come through, change any spellings that we like, fix them all, hit save and job done. You can even then come in here and go to this line break option and do manual line break. So rather than using the words per sub, customize this, get it looking however you like, hit save and job done. Now the only downside to that fixed spelling or the editor pop out thing, these are technically temporary fixes. Now what I mean by that is if you were to hit that transcribe button once again, it would remove any changes that you made. So either the line breaks or the spelling fixes within the boxes within the inspector. That's because you hit transcribe, it'll go get the transcription again out of the actual source transcription and bring it back into your magic subtitle. So if you want them to be much more kind of solid and permanent, you make the changes within the actual source media, the transcription itself, whether that's the actual source media or whether that's the compound clip which has been created. Or if you've just got a super quick fix, you're happy with the location of your magic subtitle, you know you're not going to change it. You just transcribe, then you can jump in and do all of your line breaks, spelling fixes and whatever else. And then when you render, it will have those changes applied. They'll stay forever pretty much until you hit that transcribe button once again. Make sense? Right, let's, oh, no, before I forget, no, you cannot add or remove words manually. Because of the way that transcriptions work, it spits out a big long list of all of the words along with some very specific timing. So adding or removing words manually can really start to confuse things and knock everything out of sync. I have started working on some methods for adding or removing words, but it's too janky at the moment, so I can't release it. But I'm hoping to figure something out in the future. I'm also gonna work on like a manual mode so if there's a particular line, just a single line, which isn't playing ball, you could just make a cut, type the full line out manually, and we'll just sort of guesstimate the animation. So if you have got an awkward bit, you can you could fill that in. 
So as of now, you cannot add or remove words manually, but something will come in the future. Anyway, some questions came up often, so let's answer some of those. The first one, does it work with multiple speakers? Yes and no. So yes, it works if you've got multiple different tracks. So you've got one track with one person speaking and another track with another. That works really well. I'll show you that in a second. It doesn't work if you've got two speakers on the one audio track yet, but I've already started working on that as well. And I've got some cool ideas to make that work. But first, let me show you how to do this when you've got two tracks with two different speakers. It's super easy. So let's grab a different one like Subhub. And we're just gonna bring this over here like so. We'll give this a click. We choose the track. So I'm on track one, Casey's on track number two. So let's make this a compound once again, and we're gonna transcribe. So that's gonna make that track, that's me talking into a compound clip. That was three and a half minutes, super fast. And now there's me. Now, if we just move this over here, there's the subtitles for me. Now let's go back to the effects library. We'll use a different one this time. We'll do Joker. Put this on the track above, give it a click. Now we change track to track number two, which is where Casey's dialogue is. We'll also make this a full track. It's nice and quick when you do it as a compound. We'll transcribe that, give it a second. It's done. Now we've got this Joker one. We can move over here on the left. So now on the left, Casey. We thought it would be fun to go through and uh... And on the right, <laughs> they are 100% true. They are true. There's me. So it works. Now, that was about three odd minutes. Again, it will start to chug a bit if you go too long. Just cut them into sections if you're using a particularly long podcast or whatever else. Next up, music. Does it work for music? Yes, it does, generally. It will depend on the type of music you're using and whatever else, but you can actually do something really, really neat when it comes to music. Again, thanks to those compound clips. So let's try this with a few different songs. We've got this one. Tied to a new name. That are all a little bit different. So if we go to the effects library, let's grab something like cartoon. Once again, we'll put it over this little song here and off we go. Now track one, I don't want to do the whole track this time with the compound. So we're going to do sections only, which will just turn this song into its own compound clip. We'll transcribe that, which hopefully won't take too long. And there you go. So now we've got these. Let me zoom out a bit. Which is pretty cool. That works pretty well. Now, in some examples, it doesn't work quite so well. It depends how kind of Obvious the words are, the voices are. But this is where you can do something really quite clever and pretty sneaky. So over here, we've got this other one. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold Alt, drag down to create a copy of this one down here. So it's exactly the same. We're gonna give it a click. Because everyone using this is on studio, we can come into the AI Music Remixer and we can mute all of the audio except for the voice. Now, if we go to the effects library, let's grab one of these funky double liners, put this over here like so, lengthen that out. We wanna to go to track number two, and we will turn this into a compound clip because we need to, because we've just put that music editor on there. We'll transcribe that. And this is gonna transcribe that version, which only has the lyrics. This font's a bit big, so let's go to text, winner, winner. Let's make this smaller so it fits a bit better. There you go. Uh, chicken dinner, yeah, look so good, make you wanna lick your fingers. Ooh, I just do my thing, look so good. Now, because I don't want this to move, I'd probably then highlight both of them, right click, link the clips. So now we built the actual transcription, the subtitles off that one, which we no longer need. It was a nice clean one, but now these are linked so we can come through, do what we want. We won't mess up any of the timing because they're linked, so if we hit play. <laughs> and last but not least, other languages. I said at the beginning that this was all built and tested and was working with English. Now that was kind of the main idea was to throw this out as an English only version, but then loads of people tested it and they said, yeah, it's working with all the other languages that are in Resolve as well, with the exception of Hebrew and Arabic, as I mentioned. 
Then all of the all caps thing wasn't working, so we had to map that, but it does now work. So let me just show you. So we've got a Vietnamese transcript down here. It's not actually the best quality either. Another great thing with this, because of the way the compound clips work, if your audio isn't great, you can come in and enable the AI voice isolation. I may actually build this into Magic Subtitles to give you an option because that's readily available within the API. Now our audio is a little bit cleaner. So let's go to the effects. Let's grab something we haven't used yet, like the expander. I only want to do this first section. So what I'm going to do is just do a cut in my audio. Trim this a slight bit. Give it a click. Go to section only and then transcribe. And it's only going to transcribe this one section. So again, it just saves time. We're not transcribing things we don't actually need. And if we hit play. We have the Vietnamese transcription. If we click on the little cog in the bottom right hand corner, go to the subtitles and transcriptions, make sure you've got this enable extended language supports. You may need to download some additional files. But when that's done, it will, in theory, work with every single one of these languages. And as mentioned, all caps does indeed work. Yeah. But for languages, download and test the free version. That's why it's there. So you can kind of give it a go, test it, make sure it works. You can use the free version forever. So if it does work and it does all of the things that you want it to do, just keep using that version forever. But then if you want more, the pro version is available for you to pick up. Yeah, I think that's about it. That's everything. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. I'm going to keep developing this. I've got loads more ideas. Let's see where we can take it. Thanks for watching. Bye.